What's up, everybody? It's Soren Baker here on Unique Access Entertainment. As always, please hit that subscribe button. As y'all know, it's right there. It's free, and that enables us to keep coming to you guys as often as possible with as many interviews as possible, with as many icons of the game as possible. So thank you, thank you for getting us this far. Hit that subscribe button, like our content, share it, talk about it, be about it, each one, teach one. And we appreciate your guys' support getting us this far. Now today, we have the honor and the privilege of being joined by one of the best, greatest, absolute, fantastic producers, talent scouts, all that in the history of rap. Man, phenomenal. Marlon Marl, and he's launching his new podcast, Legendized, very soon. So everybody, just be sure to Google that after you watch this interview and get ready for that. And uh, without further ado, let's get to it. So gentlemen, uh, Marlon Marl, thank you for coming through. No doubt, no doubt. I got my boy Kali Bond with me. He's the co-host on the podcast Legendize that we just started on um, this year. Yeah. You know, we got a lot in store on that one, brother. So, you know, we, we're happy to be here. That's real talk. Yeah, well, thank you both for coming through. And I wanted to get, um, I had read and was told that uh, MC Shannon, the bridge is going to be the focus of the first episode. Is that still the case? Hmm. It is. It is. Oh. Okay, so with with your podcast, what made you guys want to start with MC Shan and the bridge as the kind of the subject and the focus? Well, you know, basically, my boy Reed came to me. He said, look, we need to start a podcast. And, you know, I, I want you, you know, to, to do this. And I was like, well, me and my boy Caliban, we used to do Future Flavors back in the day. You know, so I was like, all right, we, we could just bounce off of each other and do it up, you know, and it bounces off really well. So. Um, we we did a little trial run first with Craig G. Right. We tried it with Craig G. and it worked out really good. We seen how it looked and how it felt, and like uh, we like okay. And then you know we got the sponsors behind us, and then the whole everybody else came and was like, look, yo, we yo, this is serious. This could be something serious. I said, well, let me get MC Shan to set it off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Shan, you know, he exemplifies what the show is about. You know, real talk. That's what it's saying. And you know, Shan is very very vocal. And, and during our interviews, you know, some secrets are coming out, you know, some truth, facts, That's facts. Real talk, real talk. So we're going to be pulling out, you know, some facts and some historic moments and, and information that people never heard before That's real. on Legendize. That's real. Okay. And Cali Bonds, for you, for the going from Future Flavors, being on radio and stuff, to then doing podcasts, what have you seen is similar and what's different? Oh, um, well, first of all, just the way how, how technology has changed. And being, you know, being on the air, being blessed to be on the air with Molly all through the on the future flavor days through Golden Era Radio. You know, we've always had that chemistry. So um, for him to bring me along, it's like we just continue that chemistry. But what's different is that, you know, we we definitely have a different audience and, and a wider audience now with the World Wide Web and our mm -hmm. podcast. Mm -hmm. And then being, you know, either virtual, interviewing people virtually and seeing them in, you know, in, in the Zoom room or whatever have you is also something different. And I'm pretty sure as we, as, as we progress and, and get back to our new norms, we'll be in the same room with some of our guests. But you got to also think about it, too. We was like the innovators of Internet radio, because when we did, we left Hot 97, we went straight to the Internet. Right. And we had an Internet radio station before most radio stations had Internet access. So, you know, we kind of like the pioneers of that. We brought that hip hop straight to the internet right. the underground followed us because we was lucky enough when we was on hot 97 that we started a chat room on aol and, and my boy Isle told us how to stream and then we started streaming and then right. you know we was streaming while we was on eight you know on, on hot 97 too so when we left hot 97 we continued to streaming and you know that was one of the innovations of streaming because nobody was doing it at that time yeah so, <laughs> future flavors online yeah that's crazy well, it's also amazing, too, with uh, Marley in particular, with the going all the way back to Mr. Magic up till today, being involved in rap radio basically from the beginning to now. So yeah. with that, Marley. Uh, it's crazy because for me and Mr. Magic, that was the first rap show, yes, hands yes. down. That was the first rap show, you know, putting the drops in between. It was like the blueprint of what everybody's doing across the world right now for their rap show, putting the drops on. Oh, this is so-and-so, this is so-and-so, putting the explosions. Mm -hmm. You know, the bomb is not too different from the explosion, Super Blast. So, you know, it's, it's like that was the, blue, the blueprint for hip-hop radio, Mr. Magic Rap Attack. 
Yeah. And, and for you, what have you, you know, when you look back to things you were doing then, how are you applying that to what you're doing with Legendize, your podcast? Um, well, definitely. I like to keep the energy up, of course, you know, keep the, the subjects very current, and, you know, and just, you know, keep it flowing forward, in forward mm-hmm. motion. It's all about forward motion. We don't look back. We don't live in the past. We're just going forward. And, and one thing that's special about the podcast is that you're going to see Marley in, in, in a different frame of light, mm-hmm. because usually when he was hosting, it was little wholesome because we was about the music and he was DJing. So now Wally is, you know, it's it's strictly, you know, an on air personality doing interviews and hosting segments. So, you know, he's, he's been doing it behind the scenes for a while, but now you're really going to see it in full bloom now. No doubt. No doubt. We, you know, we're here. It's it's what we've been doing, man. I mean, you know, the only difference now is that we're turning the camera on. Now y'all seeing (laughs) y'all got to live with us now. So, yeah, we've been doing it all the time yes so, you know now y'all with us That's okay with us. <laughs> and, and then having craig g in early on uh, i think is interesting too because of of course taking it back in the days to the transformer record uh marley that you did with the uh, pop art and everything but i wanted i wanted to get marley since craig was so young at the time mm-hmm. what what did you see in him that made you be like you know what this guy right here has got something. And the fact that you're still together today. You know what the funny thing is? He lived in my building in Queensbridge. And his brother used to be in one of my rap groups first. But his brother took another route. And, you know, I always like, was checking out Craig. He was always writing on the side. And one day he came to me and said, yo, check this out. And I was like, oh, that shit is all right. Leo, let's go in the lab. And then, you know, then the, uh, let's say Philly came. Cats from Philly came and they was offering situation so i was like yo man you know you need to jump on this right here and let's do this quick record he's like okay and he, he went in there um they signed him real quick and he you know he did his joint but he, he he just was a kid from the building you know what i'm saying i guess i was different in the industry i was like just picking out straight talent you know just going for the talent like people i you know it wasn't it wasn't nothing about it was just having straight talent and um, we're definitely gonna be straight on it That's yeah what, and also, of course, that record came out after you'd already done some some serious work. But that and the Queen of the Rocks with Roxanne Shante were the first ones I noticed where you're actually Marley Marl was on it. The other stuff I had seen, I had to figure out later that that was actually you because Marley Marl wasn't on it. It was some M2 or MM, you know. So why why did you use Marley starting at that point with the Queen of Rocks and Transformer? Um, because M2 was Marley Marl, but I didn't establish myself as a producer yet. You know, I, I didn't even know that I was actually going to be a producer. I'm just making these hot joints that people seem to be liking. And, you know, I was just a DJ going to the studio, making hot joints. So I didn't really look at myself as a producer. I looked at myself as a DJ. First record, it didn't say produced by Marley Marl because, you know, I don't, you know, I I didn't even think I was even a producer at that point, but I was putting together some pretty good beats, if you know what I mean. Some pretty good, you know, some solid beats and stuff. But future classics. At yeah, time. yeah. But I didn't even know I was producing or realize it. You know, when the first time I saw my re- name on a record produced by Marley Marl, and I'm like, yo, man, Ty, what you doing, man? What the fuck? <laughs> yo, what you doing, <laughs> man? <laughs> Yo, why you put produced by Marley Marl, man? I'm a fucking DJ, man. People ain't <laughs> going to take me serious for being a DJ. You know? <laughs> Oops. <laughs> so wait, you were, so you were actually upset then. That's crazy. When I first saw it, I was like, come on, man. Why you do that, man? You fucking me up, man. <laughs> you fucking me up, man. People's not going to take me serious as a DJ. <laughs> <laughs> that's so crazy that's so crazy and and then because you got to look there was none before me so i didn't know what we was getting into nobody right. was i couldn't be like yo man you're doing this like so and so so and so man yeah it was the first time you know the dj was actually becoming a producer right usually the dj was behind the scenes doing all the dj work and the mc's doing his shit they're not saying he produced it he's you know he's the dj 
Right, right. You can made it hot, not the producer. <laughs> <laughs> so well, after I got over that, you know, <laughs> everything went forward. So speaking of pop art, the thing that always I've heard so many different stories. Um, mm -hmm. So what is the origins for your interaction with them as far as um, getting to be able to collaborate with them, being that they were in Philly, taping it off the radio, Roxanne, you know, what, what's really going on and how getting with Craig G for them and all that? To be honest, let me tell you something. Back in them days, New York was all some bitch ass shit. I'm going to just tell you that straight up. They was not letting niggas in. Mr. Magic, you know, he was in because he was doing the rap music first. So he had he had his he had his foundation in. So they couldn't remove him. But other than that, New York was on some bitch ass shit. So we went to Philly. Philly put us on. Philly had a scene going on. You know, um, Lawrence and them had pop art records, they've had Lady B on their label. They already had um, they already had their success down there. You, you get what I'm saying? So what happened, they heard what we was doing. They was like, yo, man, we put you all on. We put that out. We was like, what? <laughs> we was like, what? We don't got to suck no dick. We don't got to do this. What? <laughs> yo, just put niggas on? Yo, let's go to Philly. <laughs> <laughs> so yo and then bomb and that's you know it was like to be honest i look at most of my career like we was on the side of everything not really truly in the middle of everything because they hand picked out who they want to fuck with out of who, who i fucked with they you know hand picked and said oh we want to fuck with him put him over here put him over here let's do this for him you know i seen that happen but i always felt that we was you know, like the juice crew, I always felt that we was in it, but we wasn't quite in it. We was like always fighting for hours. Every everything was a fight for us. It was such a fight for us to, to survive in the music business. It was a inside fight too. <laughs> wow. You get what I'm saying? Well, we, we all came out as fighters. We didn't come out to entertain you in, in most ways. We came out fighting. We came out battling. If you notice, this is how we got, you know, most of them came yeah. out. We came out in battle. <laughs> well, I want to get, speaking of battles, I wanted to get to take your radio. But before I got to that, I was always intrigued. And I talked to Shan about this with the Feed the World, because the uh, several things about that record. One, it's on MCA. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to get early in the game, the difference that you saw working with MCA versus working with a total street independent a uh, label like pop art what were the similarities what were the differences well well mca that wasn't our deal it was like it was like in charlie casanova's deal and he was looking for a rapper i was like there's shan rap on this joint they want to put together bong 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 he's like oh i bet so i think he got his fee he went and did his thing and they said hey, we want to be you know and feed the world because you know usa for africa is big and blah, blah. he's like all right whatever bong 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 i can write that he just took one to his pen wrote that did it gave it to them and you know it, it was what it was it wasn't uh we wasn't trying to um change the world or nothing with the song it was just that you know they had a production deal and wanted to make a song like that and he, he made his pen make that song real quick and that's what that was you know it wasn't we wasn't trying to change the world with it. We wasn't trying to break new ground or be the next whatever, whatever, because we knew that we had heat coming. Uh, <laughs> <yeah>. We knew. <laughs> so then I knew with uh, Casanova, Charlie Casanova, I, I always remember too, that was the first and the only time for several years I, I saw that you co-produced it or you guys produced it together. So for that, for Feed the World, what did you do? What did Charlie Casanova do? I probably made the beat. And if there's music, they probably put some music on it. Because I was always the beat guy. You know, okay. I make a, make a hot little beat. And, you know, you, you can hear my signature in the beats. <laughs> you Absolutely. Can, you can definitely hear, you know, what I do, what, what I was doing back then. And, okay. and, and when I was doing it on, it's like, it's like incredible because it's incredible because there wasn't no NPCs. It was like, we was all triggering off of 
eight oh eight into yeah, we was triggering off of eight oh eights into individual samplers. It's before the drum machines came, so all right. Like that was like real, real rocket science. <laughs> and later you'd be dropping lots of science, but we'll get to that in a second. <laughs> yeah. Be sure to check out the history of gangster rap by Soren Baker. He's official. History of gangster rap features exclusive interviews with Ice T, Snoop Dogg, MC Ren, the DOC, and dozens of others. The history of gangster rap, a definitive look at how Los Angeles changed rap forever. In Los Angeles, the streets definitely set the tone of the hip hop music. I'm 19, I got a $50,000 car. My whole angle always was I'll be street, but I will always tell you the horrors that go along with this life. It would be penalties and casualties for just wearing the wrong color in somebody's neighborhood. And once gangster rap made it from the streets to the TV, the genre exploded. What's that five on your TV basketball? Your MTV it just catapulted us from being local heroes to national gangbang rappers. The history of gangster rap discusses it all from 1980 up till today. It's always gonna be shit happening in the streets. You know what I mean? So it's always going to be something to talk about. The history of gangster rap in stores now.